The Louisiana Seafood Board is proud to sponsor Miss Lucy's Cooking Series. Louisiana cooking is known around the world. And Louisiana's main ingredient? Seafood. Brought to you by the crawfish farmers and harvesters of Louisiana grown crawfish. Bonjour, welcome to Miss Lucy's Cajun Classroom. I'm your host, Miss Lucy, and your teacher. And today, I am so excited because I am in New Orleans, Louisiana at the Crescent City Farmer's Market, where I will be picking out my bone crevette, which is good shrimp. Then I'll be teaching you how to prepare a very special recipe. So you stay with me, and I'll teach you a lot of things about shrimp. Allons à l'école. Mmm, look how gorgeous these bone crevettes are. Let's go to the Crescent City Farmer's Market and I'll show you where I got these. One of the dishes my family really loves is shrimp au gratin. So I'm after the main ingredient, shrimp. Les bone crevettes, or as I would say, les bon chevrette. Any way you say it, Shrimp means delicious eating. I went to the Crescent City Farmer's Market in New Orleans to pick up these gorgeous shrimp to use in my dish. Clara Gersty of Pete and Clara Seafood comes from Bayou Sauvage, just east of New Orleans. She has a great assortment ready for her customers. Well, hey, Miss Clara. How Come you on, doing? Sabah, Hi, okay. bon? Bon? <laughs> oh, okay. I see you've got some beautiful shrimp here today. Where did you catch these? Uh, my husband caught them yesterday. It's a brown shrimp season. Just opened up yesterday morning at 6 o'clock. Right. These are the brown shrimp that he caught. Uh -huh. And there's white shrimp mixed in from the season. They stay here and get large so that you have some large shrimp in the beginning of the season. Well, now this, the large shrimp, is what I would fix for my cameraman because he likes fried shrimp. Oh, yeah. And that's what I like to cook. But today I'm going to be needing some of the smaller shrimp because I'm going to make shrimp au gratin. I've never have you had ever shrimp? No. Well, good. Well, I tell you what, when you see me fix them, you know how to do it. Then okay, and then I'll tell you. my husband yes, so he can do it for sure me. <laughs> so now, uh, shrimp is not only very nutritious, it's the most popular shellfish in the United States. Luckily, it's available year-round. They are normally graded by size and count, meaning the average number of shrimp to make a pound weight. Determining how much to buy will depend on the size, but generally count on one third to one half pound shelled shrimp per person. Of course, I could probably eat a pound. Shrimping in the Gulf of Mexico is still big business. Every day you'll see boats heading out to the Gulf. They always hope to come back home with their ice chests filled to the brim with their catch. Every year, Louisiana's shrimping industry adds over $1 billion to the state's economy. Over 85% of the shrimp sold in the United States are imported from other countries. But I think Gulf shrimp, Louisiana shrimp, are tastier, more tender, and more importantly, fresher. In the past, Louisiana was the number one producer of domestic shrimp. As the folks of the Louisiana Shrimp and Petroleum Festival put it, they honor those who have worked tirelessly through rain and shine, and sometimes even hurricanes, to provide the area's economic lifeblood for over half a century. They've had this festival in Morgan City on Labor Day, 
since 1936. It's a beautiful blessing of the fleets combined with a great festival, all in honor of the folks who worked so hard for all of us in the shrimping and petroleum industries. The festival also emphasizes the unique way in which these two different industries work hand in hand, culturally and environmentally in this area of the Cajun coast. Just goes to show you that sometimes water and oil do mix. One thing I like about shrimp is their versatility. You can cook them in so many delicious ways. You can boil them, fry them, grill them, put them in a gumbo, use them in casseroles, and they're great hot or cold. So do yourself a favor, Shaft. Find a recipe you love that has these bon crevettes and cook some for you and your family. These are the gorgeous chevrettes, as I would say, that I picked up in New Orleans. Aren't they beautiful? They were just in season, just starting to come out. And this is the beautiful white bone crevette that we picked up and we are cooking today. Later on, they'll get a little larger because they were just starting to come out as they were just gathering them. And of course, we uh, get these because they're the perfect size to fix the au gratin, which is au gratin, shrimp au gratin that I'm fixing today. This is an unusual dish as the lady that I bought these from even said she had never heard of the shrimp au gratin because you always hear of the crab meat au gratin. Well, guess what? I've got a shrimp au gratin recipe that'll knock your socks off. So first you have to melt you some butter, which I have already done make a blonde roux, not a dark roux. So this is, just stir this up and make sure you use butter because it, it's a very rich, rich gravy. And I don't think that the oil would be uh, as tasty as butter. Of course, this is a New Orleans uh, shrimp and therefore you have to kind of cook like they do in New Orleans, which is wonderful, wonderful food. Okay. And of course, the shrimp, uh, they're so tasty any kind of way. But like I said, the smaller ones are good for gravies or gratins and uh, jambalayas. The larger shrimp are more or less for frying. You butterfly them and you fry them, and oh, they are so wonderful. They're delicious. I love them. That's my favorite way to fix shrimp. And like I said before, I would say chevrette, and of course, now the real uh, French way is the crevette, the bon crevette, and we are celebrating the bon crevettes this year, which is a fantastic seafood. I love it. So now I've got my butter and my flour is just sauteed real good. I call it sauteing flour because you don't brown it and you just slightly cook it and it takes that uh, floury taste out of it, but you don't want to cook it too much. So next to this, I'm going to add some milk. This is the, uh, of course, the canned milk, evaporated milk. And I find that it gives it such a good flavor I uh, guess you could use the cream, but I like the flavor that the canned milk, the evaporated milk, gives. And this is, mix it all together. And you're wonderful. Mmm, 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 mmm. Mmm, smell those wonderful aromas coming from this pot. It's great. Even butter and flour smells good to me. Of course, anything smells good to me. Okay, let that kind of get to a little slow boil. Then next I'm going to add my onions, which you need your uh, chopped up very fine. Remember, we're just gonna bake this. Your shrimp is already sauteed. And to this I'm gonna add some cheese. You can use the sharp, the 
or it, just any kind that you like, the Parmesan and even the Swiss cheese would be good in here. But um, just go ahead, I, prove, I, I prefer this because I like the, the color and it's just, oh, it's great. Let me see, let me lower this some. I don't want it to get too thick too fast. Now, if see how it's thickening up? You can always add more milk if it's too thick. And remember, the reason I sauteed my shrimp in the other pot is because they just drew water. Okay, onion tops, which is great. Pepper, I'm going to season it with salt and pepper. Good. Here. That's my sauce. And of course, you know, Cajuns make gravies. I didn't know what a sauce was until I moved to North Louisiana and a chef taught me that you had to make sauces. And I said, well, Cajuns make gravies. We don't make sauces, but this is actually a sauce. It's not a gravy. Okay. Now let me add my beautiful sauteed shrimp to this. Okay. Now that is just gorgeous. This is, oh, it's going to be so pretty and so tasty. Mm-mm. Man, how can you go wrong with fixing a beautiful shrimp from Louisiana into such a dish? This you can fix, and it's so quick and easy. Just no problem. It's real, real easy to fix, even a novice like yourself or other people could fix them and it would be real real good yeah. good to the last shrimp <laughs> okay put this back here because it's hot man you mix all this together mmm look at this and you bake all that and oh it'll be so so good mmm -hmm. oh mmm-hmm smells great you know what, I think I'm going to add a little bit of cheese to this because I kind of like it with lots of cheese. Of course, the general would not agree, but that's my preference, so today I'm cooking like I like it. Okay, mm-hmm. Now, what I'm going to do, I've got this big baking dish. Of course, I'm going to bake it in this, but if you wish to make individual servings, you can just go ahead and put your individual dishes in here. So let me just go ahead and put that in here. Okay. Just spoon it in. Just throw it in. And then we'll bake this. Of course, the larger your container, the longer you have to bake it. it but actually, you don't have to bake it that long because the shrimp are already sauteed. The sauce is already cooked. And it just takes the cheese just a little bit longer to, uh, to bake and to melt. This is it. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Good old shrimp au gratin from the Louisiana waters. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's a good old fresh shrimp. And by the way, that's my cameraman's favorite seafood, so I'm sure he'll be digging into this. All right. <laughs> Okay, very good. Okay. Hmm. Man, I could just take a bite like it is there. Okay, I'm gonna put this in my oven for a few minutes while Lucy comes over and we're gonna fix a very special salad together. Okay, now, so now Lucy's gonna help me fix a salad while this back. Lucy, has your mama ever taught you how to make her special salad? No. She hasn't? <laughs> well, I declare, well, would you like for me to teach you? Okay. Oh, well, she taught me, so maybe I can teach you. Now, we've got a few things to chop up here. Now, pick your choice. I'll chop the eggs. The eggs, okay. Well, do you know how to slice eggs? No, will you teach me? I'll be glad to. All righty, let me see. And you see, they're already boiled. Don't ever chop a, a soft boiled egg or a raw egg. <laughs> I guess you know that, right? You take home egg, don't you? Okay, you see, you just cut them up just this, just like this, because you want the yolk to show. 
Whoops, and you know, you may break it up, it's okay. It's all right, you don't have to be perfect all the time. All right, now you think you can handle that? I think all so. All right, well, while I chop up the romaine, you just go ahead and do your thing. All right, you have to take the, uh, see, you take the core off, the big, big piece, and then, this has been washed. You have to rinse this real well, okay? Because you want to take all the bugs out. All righty. Mmm, we've already prepped some. Mama's already cut some up in a bowl. So we're going to make lots of salad because I think this will go over real good. Everybody just loves this. Okay? Mm -hmm. Oh, you're doing good, Lucy. Oh, my gosh, you learned quick. You learned quicker than Mama did. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, you been learning some new stuff in home ec? Some. Some? Okay. You le you're learning how to cook or so? So. So. Oh my gosh, yes. Okay. Now we're going to have to chop up some tomatoes. You know how to do that? Not no. really, huh? Okay. Well, let's, let's get rid of this. Would you dump that in here? Just dump it in. Just throw it in. Well, not really throw. Just, <laughs> there you go. You did that beautifully. All right. Now, okay. Of course, you may want to take the core out of here, you know, because this is the hard part. That's how you have to really do it. Let me show you something. I've got this wonderful knife here, and it really works good, but you have to be careful because it's very, very sharp, okay? Whoopee! It jumps right up. <laughs> we'll each do part of it, okay? Now, and you see they have to look like like these here, they have to be just wedges. You know what a wedge is? It's not a slice, it's a wedge. All right, there you go. You want to use the tomato knife? Okay. All right, good deal. I'll use this one. Serrated knives are always so much better to use because they cut so, you know, they're clean cut. Yeah, very good. Hey, you gonna make a shaft yet, girl? All right, good deal. Got that going. Mm-hmm. Good. Okay. Now, huh? what you gonna do next? Ooh, throw them in here, right? Those are great tomatoes from up north of Louisiana. I think they're old grove tomatoes. Which old grove has wonderful tomatoes. All right, babe. Well, and now the next, what you gonna put next? The mandarin. Oh, uh, went and um you wanted a piece? Did you like one? Okay. <laughs> Mama always tastes before. You know, this is quality control, okay? Because you want to make sure that every ingredient is good enough for our guests. Okay. Is it? Very mm. good. Mmm, very good. All right, good. Well, let's just go ahead and put our mandarin oranges in here. Mmm, very good. That is going to be a. You know what, Liz? That's almost good enough just to eat. For a meal, huh? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, you know what you do next? You go ahead and you pour this slowly over the salad. You see what I'm saying? Okay, very good. Now, you can just pour it over, but use the whole thing, because this is that poppy seed dressing, and mmm, it adds to the flavor of this. So, and Lucy, while you do that, I'm going to go over there and start baking our cheesecake, okay? Okay. Good. You can handle it, girl. All right, and now for a great cheesecake from a very special niece. And Jan taught me how to make this. But, you know, I had a problem with it because I, I just didn't know how to make cheesecakes too well. I had made one in my life, and it proctored practically was a failure. So, you know, I was afraid of this one, but she helped me real well. I've got some condensed milk in here already. You're supposed to use the chocolate condensed milk, but since I didn't have any, and of course I couldn't find any at the stores, I used the chocolate syrup. Because you know how we improvise, so you always can if you like to cook and you know how to do that. Then next to that, let me mix this up. So I make chocolate condensed milk. You can add any flavor you want to the condensed milk and make it taste like you want it. All right. Now I'm going to add some cream cheese. Of course, I guess I should have let mine be at room temperature. And I didn't. Just got it out of the fridge. Of course, it doesn't matter because it'll get room temperature in a minute. All righty. Cream cheese and sour cream. 
Okay. Mmm. All those wonderful flavors are going to come together. And of course, I'm a chocoholic, and I guess that's why my niece knew I would love this recipe. She knows I love chocolate. All right. Then we're going to mix all this together. Woo! Wow. Mmm. Oh, yes. Mm-hmm. Very good. Mm -hmm. Okay, and to that I'm going to add some vanilla flavor. Mm -hmm. Very good, that's all mixed. All right. And to this make sure I'm going to add my eggs. Now I've already beaten them, so for a time element, you can add them one at a time if you want to, or you can beat them and then add them all together. And some cake mix. This is what's so good about this. You use cake mix in it, and you don't have to worry about the, the leveling of it or nothing. Okay. Pour it again. Very good. I'm going to take it a little easy on my mixer this time so I don't have flour all over me. Cake mix. All right. Mm -hmm. Mix it up real good. Mmm. I can smell that chocolate. I'd almost rather eat it than bake it. Mmm. -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Got this done. Good. Mmm. -hmm. My licking machine would be here, Lucy. She'd be ready for it. Let me get this out of here. Okay. I add this here so it doesn't drizzle on here. Okay. To that, I'm going to add my chopped up gold brick. You put this in your food processor. Now, a good hint for this is to refrigerate your gold bricks because actually, uh, if you let them set at room temperature, it'll be harder for them to uh, get chopped up any way that, or any. Uh, any way that you're going to chop your gold bricks up. See that, how pretty that is? Mmm. But if you refrigerate them, they get harder, and it's much easier. So now I'm going to pour this in my baking shell, which I've already done. I've uh, taken the liberty for time element. This is the cake mix with some butter, and you just pat that in here. Of course, it's going to bake all together in the oven. Let me pour this in here. Mmm, oh my gosh. This will be my favorite cheesecake. I can just see it now. Mm-hmm. Because actually, I'm not too fond of cheesecakes, but I guess I'm fond of anything with chocolate in it. So I know I like this. My children love cheesecake, and I know Jan's daughters like cheesecake, and that's why she came up with this recipe because her daughters love this. She's got three daughters, and I think they all like her cooking. And so she made this one in their honor. Mm-hmm. Look at those chocolate chips in there. Gold break chips. Mm-hmm. Now, of course, the finishing touch here before you bake this is the slivered uh, pieces of gold break. Okay. A friend of mine sent me a whole bunch of gold brick, and I said, Jan, we got to find out what to do with all this. And uh, so, actually, we found out. We ate half of them. Yeah, well, Jan did, but I did. All right, now I'm going to put this in the oven. Of course, this has to bake at 325 for, I guess, about 30 to 45 minutes. Okay, and then you let it cool on a rack. Let it cool on the rack for about 30 minutes, and then you refrigerate it for about an hour. And of course, I've already cooked one, and I've cut me a piece. And honey, the final, final grand finale, chocolate syrup, you drizzle it over the entire cake. And ooh, look at this. Mmm, man. You think you found the pot of gold. Well, good, Lucy.
I tell you, it's time for a simple meal after us spending a couple hours in the kitchen together. But first, I want to read a letter from one of my fans, okay? Dear Lucy, watch your show today and your granddaughter is adorable. I really agree with her, you know. It's the first time we've seen her in person. My husband and I sure enjoy your show. Take care and happy cooking. Janine in Boise, Idaho. Thank you, Janine, for this wonderful letter, and thank you for joining me today. Hope that you have learned some lessons in Miss Lucy's Cajun classroom. Okay, Lucy, let's eat. Thank you. The Louisiana Seafood Board is proud to sponsor Miss Lucy's Cooking Series. Louisiana cooking is known around the world. And Louisiana's main ingredient? Seafood. Brought to you by the crawfish farmers and harvesters of Louisiana-grown crawfish. To order Miss Lucy's cookbooks, Please send check or money order to the address on your screen or call toll-free 1-800-257-5829.